Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be looking at Tautronic's latest noise canceling headphone, the Sound Surge 90s. And we're gonna see how they stack up against what most would agree are the current king of noise canceling headphones, the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Now the Sound Surge do come in at less than a quarter of the price of the Sony's, but this definitely doesn't mean you're only getting a quarter of the value. And if you're looking to save a decent amount of money, then the Sound Surge might be the go. And if you wanna grab a pair or the Sony's, I'll leave affiliate links down in the description below with updated pricing, because there's always coupons and deals flying around there. Now, Tautronix did reach out to me to review the Sound Surge 90s, but I paid for the XM4s with my own money. But despite that, you're gonna be getting my honest, picky opinion as usual. I'm also gonna leave timestamps down in the description below, because look, my videos are on the longer side, but that's because we go in depth. So if you're picky with your audio, so am I, and I'm here to help. Let's get into another Picky Review. All right, starting with physical features and design, and look, you probably know about the Sony XM4s by now. They're built really well. It's made kind of out of plastics, but it's got a smooth matte feel to it. I'm a big fan. I love the design. With the Tautronics though, they're actually a lot better than I expected. You got more like smooth hard plastics around the headband and that kind of stuff but the actual ear cups are made from metal, so they have like a cold touch to them, which is pretty nice. You can probably tell my pair here isn't like completely even on the headband there. And look, they probably don't have the same quality control as Sony. Uh, you got some screws showing on the inside of the headband there as well. Not that it really matters, but like the Sony's, you can fold the ear cups in exactly the same way. The hinge is a bit smoother on the Sony's, but the Tautronics are still fine. You've also got some more kind of firm fake leather there on the headband of the Sony, but you get kind of more cushioning on the Tautronics. I say it's kind of even there. Let's run through some of the main differences though. And the first main difference is that the Sony's use touch controls. You still have two physical buttons to power on and off. You can use that for voice assistant or toggling through ambient and noise canceling, but everything else utilizes touch controls and they're pretty much perfect. Really good sensitivity, really good accuracy. I'm a huge fan with the touch controls in the Sony's. On the Tautronics though, you've got the classic physical buttons on the right ear cup. They're in a little bit of a weird position, but after like an hour of use, I kind of got used to it. And you could control everything like your play pause, skip tracks, volume controls, uh, turning noise cancelling on and off, and voice assistant, all the good stuff. You can't fast forward or rewind on the Tronzo. On the Sony's you can, no one ever mentions this, but you can do it if you don't know how. You just kind of swipe and hold, and you keep holding and it'll fast forward. Other way, you rewind. Really handy feature. More headphones should have this feature and more true wireless earbuds should have this feature as well. So good stuff, Sony. One thing you can do on the Tronzo, which you can't do on the Sony's, is a quick double tap and then it'll redial who called you last or I think whoever you called last. So if you need that, you've got it. Slight con with the Tronzo. When you have noise cancelling on, a blue light stays on the actual button. I don't really see the point of this because you probably have the headphones on so you can't see if the light's on anyway, but Look, no unnecessary lights on the Sony's. Second major difference is with the headband. You can adjust both the same amount, so they could pretty much fit any head, even my giant head. Just the Sony's are, they kind of stay in place a little bit better. The Trons are just a little bit more flimsy. I found myself like having to readjust them every now and then, whereas the Sony's have stayed in place all the time. Nothing deal breaking, just a minor con. Third major difference is with the ear cups. The Sony's are just a little bit more spacious. The ear cups are a little bit softer. The Trons are still good though. The actual ear cups you might prefer. They kind of got more of that kind of leather, fake leather feel, whereas the Sony's are a little bit more plasticky. Plasticky a word? Plasticky is definitely a word. Plasticky, plasticky. That sounds weird though when you say it. Plasticky, 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 plasticky. Speaking another language. Anywho, let's talk about comfort. And just to let you know, you already know I have a giant head. I've also got slightly above average ears, 0.8 centimeters above average. Yes, I did Google it. But anyway, I can't really wear any headphone for a long period of time due to my giant ears, but the more comfortable pair out of the two here is the Sony's. They just feel a bit lighter, a bit more spacious around the ears. They are lighter as well. They come in at around 250 grams, where the Trons are about 280 grams. But in saying this, the Trons are still really comfortable. Like if the Sony's were a 10 out of 10, I'd give the Trons about like an eight out of 10 for comfort. Clamping force is pretty much identical on both pairs. It's pretty minimal, which makes these like secure enough for like walking or sitting down. A lot of people use the XM4s or XM3s. Like you can't really tell they look the same, but I can go up and check. I'll go behind people's back and check and see what they got and I'll do it. But yeah, you can use them for training if you want. I personally like the old in-ear earbuds myself. All right, to wrap up this little round here, of course, the Sony's are the clear winner, but the Tronies coming in just behind in overall quality and comfort. 
And for the price you're paying, like these definitely aren't like a quarter of the quality of the Sony's. You can still tell they're like a little bit more flimsy. The materials aren't of as high quality, but they are, I feel like they're definitely punching above their price tag. With the case though, this is where the Sony's shoot ahead. You got a nice sexy case here. It's firm, it's slim. You got a smooth zipper. It's made out of nice fabric material. You got storage inside and out. Look, you can't really fault the case here. The Tronies case is, look, not so much on the sexy side. It's definitely on the bulk. It's on a little bit more on the chunky side. Uh, it's not as firm. It feels a bit more plasticky. The zip's okay. But look, it'll do the job at protecting your headphones. And it's actually pretty impressive at this price that they even included a hard case. So nice stuff there. Let's talk about battery life now. And on the Sony's, you're getting an advertised 38 hours with ANC off and 30 hours with ANC on. Similar, the Tronies have 35 hours with ANC off and 30 hours with ANC on. So pretty close there. Both pairs charge via USB-C and the cable included on the Trons is a lot bigger since there's more room for it to fit in the case. You're getting fast charging on both pairs. The Trons with a five minute charge will give you two hours and the Sony's with a 10 minute charge will give you five hours. So pretty close there. Sony's just a little bit ahead. But the Trons advertise they can charge a battery from dead to full in 45 minutes compared to the Sony's, which takes three hours. Pretty impressive. All right, onto Bluetooth and connectivity and you're getting Bluetooth 5.0 on both pairs, SBC and AAC on both pairs. It's only on the Sony's that you're getting LDAC. So if you're an Android user, you can make the most of that. There's also little to no latency on both pairs, tested on iPhone 12 on YouTube and Netflix. With gaming, this will do okay. With more intense games like Call of Duty, you kind of notice it a little bit, but you could always just plug them into your phone since they both have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a cable included. You can also use the Tronies when they're powered off with the audio jack and they sound better and they're probably like 15% louder as well. When you use them plugged in and powered on, the sound quality probably bumps up by like another 5%. Only con here though is that when you have noise cancelling on, when they're plugged in, it makes them sound really bad. It's like really bassy, really muffled. It's like a 30% decrease in sound quality. I'm not a fan. On the Sony's, you can use them with the audio cable when they're powered off but they sound pretty bad, probably like a 20% reduction in sound quality. When they're plugged in though, again, we're bumping up the sound quality here. They're also a little bit louder and they overall just sound better when comparing them to how they sound with Bluetooth on. Keep in mind, this is with AAC codec since I test on an iPhone. So if you did have LDAC on an Android phone, the sound quality might actually be similar to what it would be like with the Sony headphones powered on with a cable. Big pro though with the Sony's, when you have them plugged in with the audio cable and you want to use noise cancelling, this barely affects the sound quality, unlike the Tautronics. All right, back to connectivity and let's talk about Bluetooth range here. Both pairs got 100% in my indoor and outdoor tests. So my outdoor test is 27 meters in a nice clear open space. The indoor test is 17 meters, downstairs, upstairs, through about five walls, both on par. Really good stuff. And when I try to take them a bit further, they both cut out pretty much at the same time, just past 30 meters. Really good. In terms of multi-point connection, you can only pair two devices at the same time on the Sony's. On the Tautronics, you'd have to disconnect your old device to connect a new one, or you can power off the headphones, hold the power button for five seconds, puts the headphones into pairing mode, and then you connect to another device. Not as seamless as the Sony's though. But anyway, overall connection, never really had any random dropouts on either pair. All right, onto the microphone test now. And overall, I think it's really close. I think the Tronics might even be a little bit better. A pro of the Sony's though is because I have an ambient mode. When you're talking on the phone, uh, you're able to hear your outside surroundings. You can kind of hear your own voice. So you're not just randomly yelling in public. But anyway, I'll put up some tests here so you can hear for yourself. All right, here's a microphone test with the Tautronic Sound Surge 90s. All right, here's a microphone test with the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Now I'm going to whack in some background noise playing off my computer speakers in 3, 2, and 1. All right, now I have a crowd noise playing off my computer speakers. All right, now I have a crowd noise playing off the old computer speakers to mimic what it would sound like to take a phone call in a noisy environment. To mimic what it would sound like to take a phone call in a noisy environment. All right, so here we are on the streets. You've got some cars zooming past. Mind the little coffee stain here on the shirt. I'm getting a little bit excited there with my coffee, but hopefully it sounds, it sounds pretty good. Uh, hopefully it's blocking out some of those cars in the background. All right, and here we are outside. We've got some cars zooming past in the background here. There goes the train. Thank you, train, for coming in. So hopefully the old microphones on here, all six of them, 
uh, picking up my voice pretty well. I don't know where I was looking the whole time, but I don't know. There it is. Hopefully it sounds all right. All right, before moving on to the noise cancelling, a quick little drop of my Instagram here. If you want to stay updated with some behind the scenes action of Picky Audio and my audio ventures, link is down in the description below. All right, on to noise cancelling. And one of the main reasons you'll get either of these headphones is for their noise cancelling. And Sony's been known to be the king of ANC for quite a while, going off the thousands of reviews. I feel like most people can agree on this. But how do the Tautronics compare? And look, honestly, for the price you're paying here, you're getting some pretty decent noise cancelling. I tested the noise cancelling in three different environments. Kind of just outside my house on the road here, in my car, and in the gym I train at. And I find the gym one of the best places to test the noise cancelling because you've got like the air con pumping, you've got low frequency noises, you've got the annoying gym music, a lot of voices, weights clanging around. A really good test for noise cancelling. First of all, the passive noise isolation on the Sony's is a bit better than the Trons. And in the gym environment, they definitely blocked out the voices and the low frequency kind of airiness background noise a little bit better than the Trons. And since the Sony's can block out more of that low frequency noise, it also allows you to hear more bass with the music you're listening to. This is the same on the Trons. When you have noise cancelling on, it actually bumps up the amount of bass you can hear because it's blocking out more of that low frequency sound from the outside sounds. So the Sony's are a lot better there, but the Tronics, not too bad. Second test was just kind of on the street. Got a lot of birds chirping around here. You got like a highway in the near distance, which you can sort of hear. Sony's do a little bit better, but since like the highway is quite far away, pretty similar noise cancelling quality on both pairs here. Third test was in my car, engine's on, the air conditioner's pumping, and I've just chucked on some simulation plane noise and train noise and crowd noise and that kind of stuff. Here's where you can see the Sony's do a way better job at blocking that low frequency sound, especially when using the simulated plane noise. But in terms of blocking out like voices with the train noise and the airiness of the plane noise, the Tronics are just behind the Sony's here. So the Sony's again, a lot better, but not by like a crazy amount. Both pairs also have the same amount of that noise cancelling hiss kind of sound there. And both pairs also have pretty much the same amount of cabin pressure as well, which is pretty minimal. Overall, let's say like the Sony's are a 10 out of 10. I'd give the Tautronics a solid seven out of 10. Not too bad for the price, but a big differentiator here is that on the Sony's, you're just getting a whole heap more features that you just don't get on the Tautronics. A big one the Tronies are lacking is a transparency mode. Uh, it's kind of weird because I feel like they got all the microphones they need for noise canceling, but look, it's not there. But the biggest difference is that the Sony headphones and a lot of their products have an app and pretty much the best app out there right now. And this gives you heaps of features such as like an EQ, so you can change the sound of the headphones, auto powering off, you got auto pause and play on the headphones, which you can turn on and off if you want. Uh, you've got speak to chat, you've got firmware updates, so the actual firmware of the headphones and noise cancelling and sound quality can improve over time. You've got custom noise cancelling and ambient mode levels you can change on the app. And look, these are just to name pretty much the main ones. And I feel this is where the price tag of the Sony headphones starts to kind of redeem itself a little bit more. But look, if you don't really need those things, then the Tronies are still going to be a good go for you. But before you grab a pair, we can't forget what's most important, and that's of course sound quality. Starting with volume and the louder pair are the Sonys. At 100% volume, we're right on the brink of deaf territory. Any louder and you're going to lose your hearing. The Tronzo at 100% volume are about equivalent to the Sonys at like 85% or 90% volume. So having another notch or two on the Tronics, would have been nice. If you're looking for low level listening, you're not really getting it on the Tronies. Even at the lowest volume, they're still quite loud. Compared to the Sony's, at the lowest volume, you can really adjust and nail down the volume here to your liking. And like, you can kind of do this on an iPhone, open up the volume control thing and slide it up and down. And you can really, really nail it down to the exact volume you want. You get a nice amount of control there. <coughs> I just sneezed that whole sentence. You can probably tell. Oh, that would have been loud. Oh, the eyes are red. Why are they kind of red? You just get more control with your volume, and I honestly love using the Sony's. Before bed, if I'm struggling to fall asleep, I'll whack on the headphones, put it at like a really nice low volume to help me relax on those sleepless nights. Sound leakage is also pretty much the same at equivalent volumes on both pairs. It's pretty minimal. Now, before I talk about sound quality, I just want to quickly touch up on how the noise cancelling affects the sound, because this is pretty much evident in any kind of earbud or headphone that has noise cancelling. A lot of the time, it can really affect the sound quality in a good or bad way. And on the Sony's, when noise cancelling is on, I find the bass hits a little bit deeper. You lose a bit of clarity in the treble, but this is like the tiniest amount. It's pretty hard to know unless you're going back and forth. The Trons, on the other hand, when noise cancelling is off, 
the bass is a lot boomier, and when noise cancelling is on, it's a little bit more, a little bit more precise, a bit punchier as well. And like the Sony's, you lose a bit of clarity in the mids and the treble as well. A little bit more than the Sony's, but it's still, again, only when you really go back and forth, you kind of notice it. So overall, the sound doesn't have a drastic change on either pair when noise cancelling is on. And also keep in mind, it depends on the environment you're in, whether noise cancelling is on or off as well. Because when I was using the Tronics in the gym uh, and I had noise cancelling on, it sounded like there was more bass, but that's just because it's blocking out that low frequency sound, allowing you to hear more bass. The beauty of noise cancelling. All right, onto the sound now. And this comparison is mainly going to be with noise cancelling on and the Sony's with no EQ settings and the DSE Extreme thingo is also off because I honestly don't really like it. I never use it. And look, the Sony's pretty much outperform the Tautronics in every single way here. It's not by like a crazy amount, uh, but they're definitely better. If I was to kind of describe the sound of the Sony's in a couple words, I'd say they're smooth, warm, open, and balanced. It's a pretty safe sound signature that works well with all types of music, all types of genres, any type of media you kind of throw at it. It, it just sounds really good. It's not like mind blowing amazing, but it's pretty much up there with the best of the best in terms of sound quality in the noise canceling headphone world. And when comparing to the Tautronics, you're getting more bass, you're getting more clarity in your mids as well. So vocals are more forward and in voices on YouTube videos, they, just, uh, they have a bit more depth, a bit more richness to them as well. The treble is a bit more crisp, a bit more precise. So instrumentation just sounds a bit better. The sound imaging, you're able to pick out where instruments are coming from a little bit better as well. So overall, just kind of a better listening experience. But are they four times as good as a Tronix? Definitely not. It's only when you compare them head to head, you kind of notice the differences, but the Tautronics on their own still sound good. They have a pretty clean sound, I would say overall. Bass is a bit punchier than the Sony's. Still hits deep, but not as much presence in the low end when you compare to the Sony's. And I, I personally prefer the bass response on the Sony's. And you still get nice clarity and presence in your vocals. Nothing ever sounds too muddled. On some tracks, it can get a little bit more jumbled since the sound stage and imaging just isn't on the level of the Sony's. But overall, Again, for the price you're paying here, pretty decent sound, I must say. I would definitely say you're getting a little bit more than your money's worth uh, when it comes to sound quality. Now, this is where I'd normally run through my genre rating checklist to let you know which headphone I prefer with each individual genre. But as you can probably tell, the Sony's pretty much win for every single genre, except for, for some reason, Psytrance, I would say, sounds a little bit better on the Tautronics. I find that since the bass response is a bit punchier, there's not as much bass there. It gives more room for the synths to kind of be a bit more kind of in your face and have more presence. So if you love your Psytrance, there you go. All right, to wrap it up here today, the obvious winner in pretty much every round is the Sony's, but the question is, are they worth four times the price tag? It really depends on what you're looking for, but I'll say definitely not in the Tautronics are still providing you with some pretty amazing value. And it's great to see some budget brands out there giving some people the options who may not be able to fork out the extra cash for those more premium brands. And at the start of the year, if you were to tell me you could get noise canceling headphones at less than like 70 bucks, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. And you can look at it like this. If you want the best of the best when it comes to noise canceling and sound quality and the best app out there, then go for the Sony's. But if you don't really want the best of the best and you still just want really solid noise canceling, solid sound quality, still getting great build quality, I definitely say you're getting your money's worth here with the Sound Surge 90s. And I must say, I'm honestly pretty keen to see where we go in another year's time in the budget noise canceling world. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, chuck a like down there, comment any questions or requests you have down below. I try to reply to all comments down there. So don't be shy, please subscribe hit that bell button. Make sure you're staying updated because I've got videos coming out every week. But in the meantime, stay tuned. And of course, stay picky with your audio because life's too short for crappy sound. See you in the next video. Bye now.